This episode of Techzilla is sponsored by GoToMeeting. A few months ago, we talked about an awesome bootloader for the Raspberry Pi called Berry Boot that makes it easy to load multiple OSs on a single SD card. Which brings us to Max's question. He writes, quote, I have recently purchased a Raspberry Pi and I'm partitioning it with Berry Boot. However, I want some operating systems that don't come with the default program. I want to know, oh, I know that I have to convert the image files to a squash FS format, and I have been trying to follow web tutorials, but my computer running Linux Ubuntu isn't reacting the same way the tutorial sites say it should. Please, can you help me? Signed, Max. Pretty cool. Well, Techzilla's AP, Michael Hand, loaded up his Linux virtual machine and made a video on how to build a custom OS to Berry Boot, or how to add that custom OS to Berry Boot. Let's take a look at how that works. Michael's starring in a field package. Oh, awesome. All right, Max, it sounds like you're on the right track. So the Berry Boot site actually has a really good tutorial on how to do exactly this. I'll run through it with a virtual machine on Linux on my computer and kind of walk through the steps and tell like what's actually going on instead of just like blindly pasting some code. So let's get into it. First, since you're on Ubuntu, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have two tools installed. It's kpartex and squashfs tools. You can do that by typing sudo apt-get install kpartex and SquashFS tools. All right, so now that you have those installed, kpartex is a tool that lets you look inside of an image file and kind of see the partitions inside of there and then add mappings to that. So what we're gonna do is do the command sudo kpartex-av and then drag the image file there or type the path to that image file that you wanna convert. So this will add the mappings of the image file that you're trying to add to Berry Boot. So a lot of times, there's gonna be two partitions in there, one like a FAT32 and one a Linux partition. This will let you do the next command that we're gonna do, which is mount the file system. In this case, we have loop0p1 and loop0p2. It could be something different like loop1p1, something like that. It depends on your system and if you have other things mounted, but in a lot of cases, it will be loop0p2, the one is what you're gonna be mounting. So to do that, we're going to use this command. All right, so now we have the second partition of our image file mounted to slash mount. So now we're gonna use the sed command, which the command looks kind of scary, but all it's doing is adding, it's commenting out different places in the FS tab entry so that different file systems aren't mounted because Berry Boot will take care of that. So looks scary, it's not, don't worry, it'll be fine. All right, so now that those are commented out, We'll get to the part that we've been trying to do this whole time, which is make the image file into a squashfs file system. So to do that, we'll use this command, which all that's doing is taking the files that we have mounted and then putting it in a new image and then leaving out the library mo modules because that's what Berry Boot inserts already. All right, and that's it. We can take that image that we just created, load it on a USB drive, put it on the Raspberry Pi at the Berry Boot menu, and then from there we can choose add OS and then hold that down and in that menu there's an option to install from USB stick. So keep in mind that Berry Boot does need a Linux compatible file system so something like RISC OS which is completely different than Linux won't work and that's actually we found out later was what Max's problem was. So if you do want to use Berry Boot it has to be Linux based. All right, so I really recommend you Raspberry Pi owners out there to try something like this out because it's fun to load up an OS that you don't usually use, to use tools that you don't usually use, and there's no commitment because you can just put it on a virtual machine. So go out there, try it out, let us know if you have any success. Michael, good stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, I gotta get home and get my, uh, well, get my Raspberry Pi rolling and get my virtual machine on. You, by the way, if you're wondering where AC Nation is, it's back where it belongs. Revision3.com slash AC Nation or acnation.tv. You can get the whole full tech feed episode on any platform you want. Subscribe to it, watch it on the webpage, watch it on your portable devices. Revision3.com slash AC Nation. Robert's got his review of LG's new HD TV. Is this the best LCD flat panel of 2013? You're gonna have to watch AC Nation to find out. Hey, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors.
When your entire team can get together, it's amazing what can be accomplished. Projects that take weeks or decisions that usually take days are done right there and then. But gathering everyone together from different locations can be time consuming, expensive, and often plain impossible. That's why we're recommending GoToMeeting with HD Faces. It makes it easy for your entire team to get together online. With GoToMeeting, you share the same screen, so you stay on the same page. And the built-in HD video conferencing makes your online meetings just like being in the same room. Plus, it's simple to launch or join a meeting from anywhere using your computer, smartphone, or tablet. Even present from your iPad. Can't wait to start saving time and money at your company? Well, you can try GoToMeeting today for free. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code TEXILLA. Remember, that is promo code TEXILLA.